Hi, Hugh Taylor here, uh, coming at you with another video today uh, on my favorite topic, which is press release distribution. It's actually not my favorite topic, but it's one that I get asked about multiple times a day, and I have to explain myself a lot. So I thought I'd just make a video to capture some of the main points I like to make with people, help them understand distribution better. This is how to distribute your press release, a step-by-step -step guide, because it's not just about understanding how distribution works, it's about how to do it and how, how we can help you or other people can help you with it too. So just a quick overview. Uh, this video will explain the two different meanings of press release distribution, which is a source of much confusion. One is how to syndicate your press release with a wire service. The other is how to distribute it to reporters and other key stakeholders. We're gonna talk about both. They're not the same thing. They often get mixed up. So let's talk about distribution, the most misunderstood word, word in PR. And this is partly because uh, PR is kind of an esoteric field with some specialized knowledge, and most people don't know a lot about it. And why would they? It's, it's not something that most people deal with. And when they hear the word distribution, they it means different things to different people. So distribution in their mind means, you know, getting a press release out into the media. Um, which is true, but there's two basic ways to do this. One is syndication, which is the, which is the, what you get with a wire service like EIN Presswire. I'll show you an example of that in a minute, where it's an automated syndication of your press release, an automated like software like engine that automatically puts your press release onto a preset list of media sites. Okay. This is very effective um, if you simply want your, your news to sort of be published. It's helpful for search engine indexing. Um, it, it's not the same as a reporter actually writing a story about you. And the truth is people don't really read your press release when it's been distributed like this, except if they find it on a search engine. So keep that in mind. The other kind of distribution is where you distribute sort of manually, if you will, submit your press release to reporters, usually by email. We call this, I call this media outreach. It's called, has other names too, um, but they're quite different. And the distribution process of, of submitting your press release to reporters through a media outreach is um, sort of higher risk, higher reward. Like the, there's no guarantee you're going to get anybody to write about you. But if you do, you're going to have a real story about yourself in the news, which can be very valuable from a PR and marketing perspective. The question is, which is right for you? And remember, you can do both. It's not, not. Uh, prohibited to do both. But let's talk about um, syndication first, a step-by-step -step process. It's a pretty simple process. First, you have to have some news. Okay, this is, <laughs> again, I love everybody, but this can be very confusing to people. If you want to write a press release, you have to have some news. Like I like to say, the word new is in news. What's new? What's going on? What are you announcing? Could be a lot of things. Could be that you expanded your business or added a new product or hired a new executive. Almost anything can be news, but you have to have some news to write a, to have a press release. Then you write your press release, then you submit it to a wire service. This is something that you can do by yourself, completely by yourself. It's not that complicated. Um, people sometimes ask me to do it. I do it like as a service. It's really not that hard though. Um, I use EIN Presswire, but there are many others like Marketers Media, PR Newswire, Businesswire, Reuters, you name it. Um, some of them can be very expensive, however. Uh, but what you end up with is the automated pickup of press releases because the wire service has a pre-existing relationship with usually hundreds and hundreds of media sites. Like it, this, no, There's like no human hands involved. It's a, it's a software automation process. I don't know exactly how it works, but basically... There's a bit a piece of code that these services give to the news sites where they just like automatically get your press release. And it's usually sorted out by category. Like this is an example of a press release that has to do with agriculture. So this is like a typical EIN press wire pickup report. Usually it gets about 150 pickups. One is AP News, which is very nice, prestige. Then there's a bunch of like sort of television stations like Fox 4, Fox 40, um, you know, Philadelphia 17. And then there's a bunch of specialized uh, news sites like International Agricultural Network, Industry Today, so forth. So it's usually a mix. You get sort of some standardized ones like these television and radio stations, and then you get some custom. And you can also 
um, get your a report of the actual links that these are yeah, you know, this is from EIN Presswire. Also, it is a it's a CSV file of all your links, and some people use this for um, search engine optimization, where they feed this in, these links into a software for search engines. So that's the step by step guide to syndicating your press release. It's pretty easy. Now let's talk about media outreach, the other type of distribution, if you will. Um, a step-by-step -step way. This is a little more complicated. It's a five-step process, at least in my experience. First, again, you have to have news. Write your press release. Then you have to write what's called a, what I call a pitch, or some people call it a, a cover letter. You have to usually you don't just send a press release to a reporter. You, you, it's polite and effective to have some kind of covering note. It could be a couple, just a couple sentences, but some reason, like say, you know, here's why we're showing this to you because the reporters get bombarded with this. I mean, you talk to reporters, they get dozens or even hundreds of these every day. Like, hey, me, 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 talk to me, look at me, look at my news. You know, you have to have a way of standing out without being obnoxious, but attracting attention without pissing people off. This is not always easy, okay? And that's why sometimes people will hire a publicist like me to help them. But it is something you can do by yourself. Then you send your press release to the, to and pitch together to media contacts, a list of reporters. Okay, so far so good, but let's dig into it a little bit more and see if you actually want to succeed in this. Let's just pull this apart a little further on a step-by-step -step basis. Have news, that's your first step. What is your news? And will it be interesting to reporters? Think about their headline. The, the PR process involves a lot of thinking about what someone else is going to be thinking. It's similar to sales. It's not really about what you've got. It's about what they want, right? So if you're announcing that your, you know, food production company has a new food product out, then think about why a reporter who writes about food on the so-called food and dining beat would be interested in it. And this is where there are some difficult issues to resolve because one thing is not everything is newsworthy, even if you're excited about it. Um, you know, I'll give you an example. I was working with a company that does coffee roasting and, you know, they thought that their coffee was the best coffee in the world. And of course, cause that's their business. And they, if they didn't believe their coffee was the best coffee in the world, then they wouldn't even be in business. But if you're looking at it from a reporter's perspective, there's like 10,000 companies that make coffee. Like why in the world would I, a reporter, be interested in your coffee company? Okay, so th that was the challenge. So we had to come up with what, you know, it's like some special beans or, you know, come and taste it. We, we did a tasting. Like you had to have a reason. A reporter needs a reason to look at something. Okay, is it differentiated? Why is it different? Um, some stories are just naturally differentiated. I had a story... Um, I was approached by a client and he said, my son is 16 years old and he plays 117 musical instruments. Well, that's interesting. I haven't heard that before. And that is a differentiated story. And I was able to get that boy featured on Good Morning America because nobody had ever seen anything like him before, right? But most, most of us don't have a story like that. I wish everybody had a story like that. Then uh, let's talk about the press release itself. Do you have a catchy headline? Now, I have a lot of other videos here on the channel about how to write a press release, and have a good headline. Okay, do you have a lead paragraph, that first paragraph containing the complete who, what, why, when kind of points that journalists want to know? If the reporter looks at your press release for 30 seconds, will he or she get your story and why it's interesting? Do you have an interesting executive quote, one that can be inserted into an article? These are some of the components of a good press release that will help you with the process of getting, getting it picked up in the media by a reporter. Writing the cover letter. Can you tell your story in 55 characters? This is really, PR has changed. PR is a lot like email marketing these days. You know, you have to give people, a reporter, a reason to open your message. And remember, they might be getting 100 pitches a day. They're gonna ignore or delete 99% of them because they're busy and they're not interested. You have to make them interested, right? What's gonna get someone interesting? interested in you. And if you don't have something interesting to tell them, 
it's probably not the right time to do media outreach. This is something I tell people. And, and like people say, oh, that's so nice of you. I'm not saying this because I'm nice. I'm saying this because I want to avoid failure. I don't want to be like, oh, you know, oh, sure, let's do this. And then like, okay, it didn't work, goodbye. I don't like to work that way. I can't guarantee success. But if I don't think it's going to work, I'll say, let's wait, figure out something smart, whatever, or let's brainstorm an idea. You know, let's come up with something clever because otherwise we're wasting our time. Then when you get reporters interested in they're reading the message, is there a call to action? Like, I want to do an interview. I want you to come visit my business. I want to tell you about something, right? And then what's in it for them, right? What's in it for the reporter? And I'll tell you, in every case, it's different, but it's always the same. They are interested in a good story. They want a story that's going to be interesting and it's going to get people to read their publication. They want clicks. They want to sell ads. If you can help them with that, they're interested in you. If you can't help with them that, they're going to move on. The related activity is the fourth step in this process, which is to put together media contact lists. Who are you going to send this to? Now, it could be super simple. You know, if you're in a small city and there's one guy who writes about food and dining, well, he's your media contact. You don't have to have a big list. He's the person you want to reach. You could even just maybe call him and say, hey, I got some news for you, right? Generally, though, there's a group of reporters who might be interested in a pitch. And so this is usually by category. Like if you're in the electronics industry, there's probably 300 reporters in the U.S. who write about electronics. If you do uh, entertainment, there's hundreds and hundreds of entertainment reporters. But then, there, you know, who writes about, you know, your kind of thing? We do horror movies or music, you know, segment, segment your, your list. You may have more than one list. Very often do a local list and a national list. So like for... You know, the coffee company locally, it was like, you know, come on down. We're going to give you some coffee to taste. It's great. Nationally, it was like, you know, because you, we know you write about gourmet coffees, we'd like to offer you a sample. We'll send you a sample. So it's a different pitch and it's a different list, right? And so you may have different lists you send to. And then how do you actually reach people? So some people do this themselves. There's nothing wrong with that which is also new in the last, say, 10 or 15 years. It used to be kind of like gauche for a person to reach out to a reporter for themselves. Now it's much more common, and it's really there's no stigma attached to it. The only thing is it can be a little bit logistically complicated, like how do you actually reach a lot of reporters? So some people use platforms like the Muckrack platform. That's what we use. Muckrack is pretty expensive. So sometimes people will come to me or somebody like me. I already have a subscription to Muckrack, so I'll – you know, put together a list of, you know, 200 reporters and send your news out to them. Um, it, it's just simpler process wise to work with someone who already has a muckrack subscription, but you can do it yourself. It's not that hard if you have the time. Then a question comes up is how much, how often to, how to follow up and when to follow up. And the simplest answer is never. Do not bug reporters. They're already busy. You don't want to irritate them, but sometimes a follow up is warranted. I would say, one time only. If you're following up more than once, you're going to start pissing people off and it's going to be counterproductive. So those are some step-by-step -step thoughts on how to distribute your press release. Hopefully by now you have a better understanding of what the word distribute means. It can mean two different things. Um, if you want to learn more about it, I, I write about it in my incredible New York Times bestseller. No, just kidding. My In my incredible uh, Stop Being Invisible ebook which goes into the ABCs of pitching and has a lot of examples and step-by-step -step guidance on exec executing public relations strategies. It has a lot more of the stuff from the video, but in more depth, it's available at the link below. Also available in the link below is a special offer for distribution and the opportunity to meet with me. If you want to talk to me, you can use the link to set up a meeting with me. I want to, I'd love to talk to you. And thank you for being with me today.